In this video, we will show examples of finite groups. Again, what is a group? A group is a set of elements and a binary operation. So it is a set and a corresponding binary operation that follows the following properties. Associativity, the existence of an identity element and existence of an inverse element. So a finite group is a group in which G is a finite set. And so the examples we showed last time, they are not finite groups. The set of real numbers, the set of integers, they are not finite sets. They are infinite sets. The finite group denoted by this symbol and this one is the set that contains the remainders when an integer is divided by 3. Okay? And this one is our notation for addition modulo 3. And you know what happens with addition modulo 3. We get the remainder when the sum is divided by 3. This is not the first time you are seeing a table such as this. This stands for our operation, okay? Addition modulo 3, and this is how we read it. Okay, so we begin from the elements uh, in the first column. So 0 plus 0, addition modulo 3. Okay, so that is how you read it. 0 plus 0, addition modulo 3, and that is equal to 0. 0 plus 1, addition modulo 3 is 1. 0 plus 2, Addition modulo 3 is 2. Okay. Now pay attention to this. 1 plus 0 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. But look at this. 1 plus 2, addition modulo 3 is 0. Because 1 plus 2 is 3. And when you divide it by 3, it has no remainder. So how about this? 2 plus 0 is 2. 2 plus 1 is again 0 under addition modulo 3. And 2 plus 2, now look at that. 2 plus 2 is 1. So this table is showing to you the results when you apply the operation uh, addition modulo 3 for each pair of integers in the set. Okay, so these are the questions. What is the identity element in this group? What do you think? Well, it's 0. 0 is the identity element. Now, I will show you a table. This one, the elements in this column is showing to you the inverse element of 1 under addition modulo 3. So the inverse of 1 under addition modulo 3 is 2. And it's the same with this. The inverse, the inverse of 2 under addition modulo 3 is 1 because 2 plus 1 is equal to 0. So this one is a larger set. This is our group. Still, we are uh, into addition modulo arithmetic, in particular, addition modulo 7. This is the set of remainders when an integer is divided by 7. Again, I will show you a table, okay? Okay, so these are the questions. What is the identity element for addition modulo 7? Again, it's 0. 0 is the identity element. I will ask you this. What is the inverse of uh, 1 under addition modulo 7? What must you add to 1 so that the sum is 0 under addition modulo 7? Obviously, it's that one. It's 6. Look at that. 1 plus 6 modulo 7 is equal to 0. What is the inverse of 3 under addition modulo 7? It is 4. Because 3 plus 4 modulo 7 is equal to 0. Okay, I will show you the summary. Well, it's easy to find the, the inverse under addition modulo 7 because our modulo is 7. Any pair of integers whose sum is 7 is going to be a pair which is 
the inverse of the other, okay? So look at this. 6 is the inverse of 1. Now look at this. 1 is the inverse of 6, okay? So look at the pattern. This one is a set of units. It's the set of units in C7. And this one is multiplication modulo 7. So we are removing 0 from Z7 and we came up with this. And the reason why we did that is because our operation now is multiplication. Any integer multiplied to 0 is 0. We won't be able to get a multiplicative inverse for 0 because any number or any integer multiplied to 0 is 0. So our operation is multiplication model 7. I will show you now the the result or the summary, the table, when we apply multiplication modulo 7 to each pair of integers in this set. Again, just to make sense of this table, this is how you, you read it. 4 times 3 modulo 7 is 5. Why? Because 4 times 3 is 12 under ordinary multiplication. But modulo 7, what you do is you divide it by 7, the product, and you pay attention to the remainder. It's equal to 5. 6, okay, times 5 modulo 7 is equal to 2. So that is how you interpret this table. So again, these are the question. What is the identity element here? So obviously the identity element is 1. So I will now show you the summary uh, showing the pairs of inverses, the integer in our set and its corresponding inverse under multiplication modulo 7. The inverse of 2 under multiplication modulo 7 is 4. The inverse of 3 under multiplication modulo 7 is 5 because again, when you divide the product of 3 and 5 by 7, the remainder is 1. I hope that you have uh, noticed that we only have one identity element for each group. We don't have two identity elements. For addition, modulo n, it's always 0. For multiplication, the identity element is, is 1. And what else? What else did we see? The inverse element of each element is only one element. Okay, so let's go back. Let's go back to our tables. Look at this. The inverse element for 4 is only 2. The inverse element for 5 is only 3. The inverse element for 6 is only 6 itself. So for each element, you only have one inverse element under multiplication modulo 7. What does this tell us? These are the additional properties. The identity element of this group is unique. You only have one identity element, and this is how you write it in math sentence. For each element A of G, there is only one. Look at that. There is only one, or there is a unique identity element in G such that this is true. And not only that, the inverse of an element of G is unique. You only have one inverse for each element of a group. This is how you write it in math sentence. For each element A of G, there is only one, or there is a unique inverse element, A inverse, also in G, such that A star A inverse is equal to E.